Manhattan's financial district, a place where billions of dollars change hands every day. In the heart of it, where the skyline is an astonishing puzzle, 161 Maiden Lane, a 60-story glass needle piercing the sky, promising wealth, prestige, and unobstructed East River views. Standing at 670 feet, this skyscraper was supposed to be another star dotting the Manhattan skyline. Behind this glass and steel drama was Joel Kestenbaum, the man leading Fortis Property Group. For Kestenbaum, 161 Maiden Lane was meant to be more than a trophy, it was to be his legacy. But this legacy isn't standing tall, it's leaning, visibly leaning by 3 inches. Gestenbaum's very own leaning tower remains half complete, haunted by vandals and controversies. Construction has stalled, perhaps indefinitely. Did Kestenbaum end up throwing away nearly 300 million just to save a few million during construction? This is the story of New York's infamous banana shaped tower. A dream turned into an engineering nightmare. But how did this disaster happen? Let's investigate. This video is brought to you by Hauseo, America's most advanced home buying and selling platform. On Hauseo, you'll find the largest collection of homes for sale in America. Home sellers can sell fast and save thousands in commissions. All online. Check out Hoseo.com on the web, the Hoseo mobile app. Location, location, location. 161 Maiden Lane faces the East River. You get amazing glimpses of the Manhattan Bridge and the New York Harbor. Views like this, worth millions in the eyes of the right buyer. But the movers and shakers in New York don't just want luxury and beauty, they want practical benefits too. The tower, also named One Seaport, was all about the location. The building is within walking distance of Wall Street, the New York Stock Exchange, and the historic South Street Seaport District. Every square foot of land here is worth its weight in gold. And this lot was quite popular. Blue Rock Properties had its eye on this lot back in 2007. The company proposed a 52-story skyscraper designed by Rogers Marvel Architects. In 2011, K Development acquired the site for $41.2 million and planned to build the Seaborn. That building would have stood 40 story tall and had 175 apartments. However, K Development put the lot back on the market and sold it in May 2013 to Fortis Property Group for $64 million. The demand is clear and the price reflects that. An architectural marvel. The slender tower was designed by Hill West Architects with interior design by Groves & Co. The building's exterior is encased with a striking glass curtain wall. Residents could enjoy panoramic waterfront views. The actual cost of building the tower hasn't been disclosed. The estimated cost to build was around $272 million, and the unit prices range from $1.2 to $18 million. Joel Kestenbaum had something big and dramatic in mind. A slender spire with a glass curtain wall exterior. 161 Maiden Lane was designed to tower 670 feet above the city. It has a 15 to 1 height to width ratio, 80 luxury condominiums that offer panoramic river views, and 200,000 square feet of space that only the boldest and wealthiest buyers can afford. World class amenities. Luxurious residential towers come with luxurious amenities. Owners of 161 Maiden Lane's premium apartments would get a 24-hour doorman and concierge service, a comprehensive health club featuring a spa, fitness center, and infinity pool, a landscaped roof deck offering panoramic city views, a residence lounge and children's playroom, bike storage and private storage units, a parking garage for residents' convenience. So everything a homeowner needs to enjoy life. But did all of these premium amenities really matter when the building itself couldn't stand straight? The Fatal Choice At first glance, there's nothing off about the 161 Maiden Lane project. A tall, skinny, outrageously expensive tower in New York? The Big Apple has at least 300 of these 150 meter superstructures. What makes this one different? A massive engineering goof up. A large part of Manhattan sits on something called the Manhattan Prong. Compressed for over 300 million years, this bedrock provides a strong and durable foundation for New York's skyscrapers. 
The bedrock in New York's is typically around 50 feet deep. Most of New York's famous towers like 1 Vanderbilt, Central Park Tower, and 432 Park Avenue use pile foundations. These foundations contain steel pylons directly anchored into the Manhattan bedrock. That combination means stability. These giants barely budge. A solid bedrock and strong foundation engineering. That's the key. And these two critical factors are exactly what 161 Maiden Lane lacks. 161 Maiden Lane sits on reclaimed land, something called the Colonial Infill. It's essentially an artificial landscape composed of whatever materials Dutch settlers from the 1600s could find. Rocks, sand, trash, remnants of old docks, and even shipwrecks. If you bisect this piece of land, you'll find a 24-foot fill layer. Underneath that lays former marshland. Under that, sandy glacial deposits and decomposed rocks. And then around 155 feet under the surface, bedrock. Trying to reach this strong bedrock, developers would have had to dig 14 stories. And they decided to not do that. Gestenbaum and Fortis made a choice. Skip the bedrock, save 2.1% of construction cost, that is $6 million, and build on reinforced soil instead. On paper, they got away with it. In reality, it was a gamble between saving pocket change and risking a $272 million loss. Because when you combine a slender 15 to 1 tower with a flawed foundation, you get a leaning tower. You can't even say they weren't warned. Engineering consultants sounded the alarm, warning the soft soil could spell disaster. One consultant even submitted a 100-page report that can be effectively summarized to say, this is a terrible idea. Fortis used a jet grout soil improvement system to strengthen shallow soil layers. Basically, they injected high-velocity jets of cement grout. This process erodes and mixes the existing soil with grout to create solid, cemented soil columns called soilcrete. This soilcrete is stronger than the heterogeneous landfill soil we mentioned before, but it doesn't replace solid bedrock, especially for tall, skinny towers like 161 Maiden Lane. The mat foundation is more flexible compared to traditional pile foundations. They are more vulnerable to rotational movement, that is, tilting and uplift. And 161 Maiden Lane is a tall, slender glass wall on a riverfront. Imagine this, strong gusts of wind slam against this glass wall. Like a sail, this wall is propelled forward in the direction of the wind. That force travels down to a mat foundation that just sits on soilcrete. What do you think happened? The mat foundation tilted. If the building has already tilted three inches with a concrete skeleton and a partial glass wall, obviously it will tilt more when there's a complete glass layer on the building. Which is probably why the developers removed the glass curtain in 2020. 161 Maiden Lane does have some anti-sway mechanisms to help it counteract exterior forces. The building has four 10,000 gallon tuned liquid dampers on the top floor. These dampers use water sloshing motions to counter sway. Reinforced concrete shear walls to provide lateral stiffness to counteract the flexibility of its slender profile. Outrigger and belt wall system to distribute wind loads. 150 foot long anchors drilled into the glacial till later to prevent uplift during high winds. Ideally, this system should have worked, but the building still settled and led to unexpected mat rotation. This innovative anti-sway setup would have worked if the building was anchored into the bedrock. Unfortunately, since it was a super centered tower on soft soil, these systems didn't work. But who is to blame? Blame game begins. No one is ready to accept accountability here. Fortis Property Group blames Pizzerati, the construction management company. Pizzerati says Fortis is to blame. Both have filed lawsuits against each other. Everyone had an opinion. While lawsuits flew and industry tongues wagged, a new voice cut through the chaos. David J. Pfeffer, lead counsel for Pizzerati. Pfeffer wasn't afraid to call out the emperor's new clothes. In a now famous legal filing, he dubbed the tower banana-shaped, a line that would echo from courtrooms to front page headlines. Pizzerati's allegations against Fortis. Pfeffer, on behalf of Pizzerati, accused Fortis of using a cheaper soil improvement technique for the tower's foundation. Fortis didn't inform Pizzerati of the expected settlement behavior of this inferior foundation. 
The differential settlement and the resulting structural drift, especially from floors 11 to 21, made it impossible to safely install the curtain wall. The settlement was likely to harm workers and the public. That warning became a grim reality on September 21st, 2017, when Juan Conilo, a 43-year-old carpenter, father of five and breadwinner from Queens, fell from the 29th floor to his death. He spent a decade building New York skyline so his children could have a better life. Instead, one missed safety step cost him everything, leaving a family shattered and a city demanding answers. Fortis's allegations against Pizzerati. Fortis claimed Pizzerati, and specifically its concrete subcontractor, didn't pour floor slabs properly or account for known soil settling. Fortis blamed Pizzerati for chronic understaffing and irresponsible management practices that led to significant construction delays. Fortis accused Pizzerati of not following required safety procedures. According to Fortis, Pizzerati's lawsuit was bad faith gamesmanship in anticipation of being fired for default and poor performance. Like I said, they're tossing blame around like a football. A spokesperson for Fortis claimed, this lawsuit is patently false from start to finish and nothing more than simple defamation and a desperate attempt by a failing general contractor to divert attention from the fact it defaulted on yet another New York City project. The legal issues don't stop there. Fortis is tied up in litigation with lenders like Bank Lumi USA, Bank Lumi Lays Royale BM, Harold Maiden Lane General Partnership, and Harold Insurance Investments and Financial Services Limited. And that's not all. An abandoned tower. 161 Maiden Lane is a stalled project, and there seems to be no light at the end of this tunnel. The New York City Department of Buildings issued at least 10 code violations in 2017, many related to safety lapses during the project. The fatal accident led to more scrutiny and stay orders. A concrete spill from the 34th floor and repeated issues with safety netting resulted in multiple stop work orders in 2018. There has been no progress in the construction since 2019. Crucially, reports from 2019 also indicated that the building was still moving. Think about that. It wasn't just a little lean that stopped. It was an active, ongoing structural problem. And that's not all. The delays triggered requirements in the condo offering plan for budget updates. If the budget exceeded the original $273 million estimate, the developer had to disclose it. Buyers had the right to back out at this point, and they did. By February 2021, nearly all 66 out of 72 condo buyers had backed out of their contracts due to continuing delays and issues. In 2022, the building came under fire hazard fines from the FDNY due to a non-functioning standpipe system that was out of service for over a year. The developers had to shell out a $25,000 fine along with a $2,500 penalty. The same year, a massive graffiti appeared on the building's crown like icing on a spoiled cake. Everything that could have gone wrong with this project went wrong. Developers cut corners to save money. The building tilted during construction. There was a fatal accident. Developers and subcontractors got into a legal beef. There are ongoing, unresolved court cases. The construction stay orders from the New York Department of Building are here to stay. Most analysts predict that the lot will be sold for a discounted price. There may be no alternative but to tear this monument to engineering failure down. But Joel Kestenbaum and Fortis haven't given up. Our top priority is to work with all parties to reach an agreement and to complete this project so that future residents can enjoy one of the most beautiful properties in New York City. Their ambition is obvious. The question remains, Will Fortis win or will gravity triumph? So what do you think? Is 161 Maiden Lane a case study in engineering failure, corporate hubris, or just a perfect storm of bad luck? Did Joel Kestenbaum's gamble doom the tower, or is there still a chance to save this glass and steel dream? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. We want to hear it all. Your verdict, your predictions, your craziest conspiracy theories. Don't hold back. And if you crave more American skyscraper investigations, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And this isn't the only skyscraper in New York with secrets lurking beneath the surface. Watch our deep dives into the Trash Can Tower, 432 Park Avenue, and Jamie Dimon's 270 Park.